start with the first section of Maven Stones. Six o'clock in the evening. My name is Gloria. Some people think this is not a great name to have been landed with. They find it a simpering sort of a name, the sort of name that makes them smile an embarrassed smile. Personally, I quite like it. My mother and father must have chosen it with care. Well, my father anyway. I think, though, that my mother would have preferred another boy. She always preferred men to women. But still, she would have chosen my name with care because she knew he would have liked her to do so. Had he picked me up in his long hands and looked into my face with great love and said, she's like a flower. I seemed to hear his voice and her reply, a rose, perhaps. Rose was born, she might have thought, and smiled her secret smile. I remember all his gestures so well. He would have pushed his hair back from his forehead, blonde, floppy hair. It's easy to see I must be descended from a North man, I heard him once say. None of this anglo irish nonsense for me. I am a Dane, Hamlet the Dane. Look at my Danish hair. I must have been very young, as the joke meant nothing to me. Mother laughed. She used always to laugh at his jokes, bad or good. They were always followed by the gentle tinkle of her laughter. I don't think my name is a joke. Though, funnily enough, he hardly ever called me Florence, Flora. He called me Chicken, Chicky, or even Chuck Chuck. They were what he preferred. To shout with glee or whisper secretly in my ear when he was carrying me on my way upstairs to bed. He loved his daughter. I had no doubt about that. He never told lies of that, I'm sure. And she, well, she was different from anyone else I've ever known in my life. She seemed to love lying. Daddy will be home soon, she used to say. Won't that be great? He must be good. That will make him happy. We all want Daddy to be happy, don't we? I remember Eddie muttering, bullshit, when she said that. And I tried hard not to giggle. She pretended not to hear. 6 p.m. and across the autumn fields strolls the sound of the angelo. The sky was lacquer of indigo. Bomb, said Flora aloud, and put her book down on the table. A brilliant star, the only star in the sky at that early moment, winked at her from a million miles away. Flora winked back at it. The other old woman looked at Flora and smiled. She stuck the needle through a fold in the sheet that she had been mending and dressed herself. I would have thought she might have fallen asleep, said Flora, and missed the holy moment. How could I have fallen asleep and all this mending to do? Nellie picked the needle up and continued with her work. Her hands were never idle. She never sat without a basket of mending darning, stitching, sewing buttons, making lace for the communion dresses of the girls in the village, or lace collars. She always wore a lace collar, a white lace collar, clipped neatly onto the top of her dark blue dress and held in place with a pearl brooch that had been left to her by her mistress. Five minutes, then I must be off about the dinner just time to finish this sheet. She pulled the needle out and smoothed the linen with her fingers. Mr. Taggart sent up the boy with some kidneys and a nice leg of lamb and a couple of garlic bulbs. I told you, didn't I? He grew French garlic in his garden. Every time he sends them up, you tell me. So I do. I find it of interest. I expect we're the only people around who he shares it with. Times have changed, Nelly, dear. We're all used to garlic these days. It keeps the arthritis at bay, and of course, the 
world we live in, sometimes, 